Greetings YouTube ins. This is Efren with eKiwi3 Enterprises. I welcome you to another exciting episode of the weekly startup and small business roundup. And uh, this week I'm featuring startups. They're, all of them I'm pretty sure are on Kickstarter. It's something good to keep an eye out for future reference, future tech reference. First one is called Mayo. It's uh, where another delve into the realm of wearable tech again. It's an armband that goes up up on your upper arm, I guess. And it's, it uses your muscle movements and stuff to control different devices. You can program to control things. Uh, it's it's uh, www.thalmic.com slash en slash myo, M-Y-O. And it uh, comes in black and white. It's one of those things, kind of a unique control type device. I don't know if it's going to be a fat or if it's going to catch on, but it seems like something that could be interesting for a lot of uses. There's a video on their site that shows people different people using it, so you'll be able to put the site on my in the description of this video. And uh, the picture you'll see on my uh, WordPress blog is a little bit thicker version, but the new one's going to be a, a thinner design. It's got an ARM Cortex M4 processor, haptic feedback, whatever that means. It connects via, via Bluetooth 4.0 low energy connection. <laughs> It uses uh, proprietary EMG muscle activity sensors, uh, nine, a nine axis IMU containing three axis gyroscope, three axis accelerometer, and three axis magnetometer. And it charges, it uses a, a micro USB connector to charge. It's got a built in rechargeable lithium ion battery. It says, uh, it says uh, the armband measures the electrical activity from your muscles to detect what gestures your hand. Is making it also senses all of the motions and and rotations of your your hand and, and forearm through the nine axis IMU and uh, it'll work with um, Windows Mac I O Mac iOS and Android and it connects to them through uh, the Bluetooth 4.0 low energy connection like I had mentioned and that's uh, a one size fits all to retail for about 149 and it uh, looks like something that's either going to be just a passing fad or it's going to be you know, something's going to catch on. I don't know, but it's kind of interesting. It's really going to be interesting. It's said so they say it's possible to have it a, a, a band on each arm, so you could feasibly, feasibly maybe use that with a, a Oculus Rift headset for virtual reality. Don't know, it, uh, how, blah, blah, blah. Can't talk today. Don't know how many of you have seen the Lawnmower Man, but when he was in virtual reality, he was able to lift his hand up and draw a line and open up a menu and 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 do all kinds of things and. They have gloves and stuff, but that'd be something you just have a band instead of gloves and all this stuff on you, wireless. That might be interesting for VR. They're on Kickstarter, and you can probably get to the Kickstarter through their website. The next one is called Dronecast. They're using uh, little remote-controlled drones to carry banners and whatnot. It'd be a much cheaper alternative than hire someone with a plane to carry a banner across the sky, especially for you startups and small businesses. Got to pinch your pennies, you know. Uh... Right now they're in they're in uh, Philadelphia, New York, and, and other cities coming. And there's a video on their side as well. So the guy sitting there with the lower remote control, the banner hanging underneath the drone, a fine billboard, so to speak. Of course, if you if you wanted to make it an ongoing thing, you could probably buy your own little drone and make a banner and fly it yourself. But you probably have to have permissions from the city and whatnot, I would assume. So. Maybe they're, maybe they're taking care of that, and so it might be more feasible to do it that way. But Anyway, they're uh, www.dronecast.us. And again, the websites will be in the description of this video. And the third company is called BitLock. It's basically a smartphone-controlled bike lock with a, with a big U, U, uh, the, the big U shackle. You don't need keys. You don't need anything. Just walk up and hit a button. It senses your proximity, so it knows you're there. So you know, it identifies you as you get close. In case someone else tries to use theirs to open it, then three feet of your bike. As long as the BitLock app is running in the background of your phone. And uh, if your phone dies, you can print out. You can generate a 16-digit binary code and keep it in your wallet, so you can punch that in manually to the lock to open it. You can map your ride. The app will, will map your ride, how, you know, how much uh, CO2 emissions you're saving, how many calories burned, how many miles you cycled. There's no GPS in it, but you can buy GPSs that are meant for bikes. 
And then you can disable that feature if you want to pres preserve your battery life, your phone battery. And it'll never forget where you parked your bike either. It uses your phone GPS to show you where you parked your bike, just in case you forgot. And and uh, if, if anyone else on the on the network wants to make their their bikes visible to you, you can see it on there as well. And there's a share feature you can share where your bike is. If you, if you do like, a, like if you have a company where you want to rent bikes out, you'll be able to find them that way. And it supports iPhones uh, 4S or 5, 5C, 5S, iOS 6 and 7. And, uh, and, and, and certain Android phones running Jelly Bean 4.3 or later. Samsung Galaxy S3, S4, Note, Note 2 and 3, HTC One, uh, Droid DNA, Evo, Motorola Moto X, Droid Razor and Max, or Droid Razor Max, Razor M, Google Nexus 4 and 5. And they, they do offer international shipping. And the battery is a five year battery life. They, they, they consider average use is about five locks and unlocks a day. So I'm guessing it's not rechargeable, it just the dies you replace it. They're using a, a newer battery I've never heard of called a lithium thionyl, thionyl chloride battery technology, which is the highest energy density among all lithium batteries, according to them. It has a low self discharge rate, about 1% a year or so. So I guess it just after after a few years you just replace it. I don't want to guess how much it would cost. They'll probably sell it to their company too, I would assume. And apparently the replacing the battery is pretty easy. You pull out the U shackle and there's a compartment there. And so and it's supposed to be so should be able to the should be able to withstand uh, extreme temperatures anywhere from minus 55 Celsius to 125 Celsius. But they stress has not been thoroughly tested in extreme temperatures yet. And you do have to have a data connection on your phone in order to access with others. And BitLock does not doesn't work with NFC. That's good. It can't get hacked. It uses Bluetooth for low energy. And of course, it but you have a 16-digit code. You can keep your wallet. Of course, if you forgot your wallet and your phone dies, you're pretty much screwed, I guess. And the lock itself is very secure. It's made of reinforced and cut-resistant steel, and uses a high-security disk locking mechanism and a bent shackle leg. So, <laughs> And it's, it's, it relies on the same security protocols used in online banking systems. The encryption is based on open and published standards. If you lose your phone, I guess you can you can disable access by resetting your account password online. There's no GPS inside of the BitLock, but there are a couple of companies that sell GPSs meant for bikes, like uh, Bike Spike or Helios Handlebars. I guess they have the GPS incorporated inside it. This is funny. He says, what happens if I share my bicycle with someone and they never bring it back? Silly question. Says, you should not share access with anyone you don't trust. No. <laughs> There's no subscription fee uh, if you pledge on Kickstarter to support them, but after that, there may be a fee. I don't know. Okay. And the fourth business. I think that was three of them, wasn't it? My, oh, yeah. Fourth business is called Pono Music www.ponomusic.com There's a, a company started by Neil Young. It's also in the Kickstarter stage. And they're, what they're trying to do is bring uh, highest quality, high-definition uh, high music to a portable device. So ba basically one step from the recording studio or the master tapes. And that's what, he, that's what, that's what they're trying to do with this company. And, uh, and there's be a Pono Music store where you can buy the, the high-quality music. Uh, songs from and apparently you can't stream because of the because of the situation with high quality songs they had to have a high bit stream and all that and they're they're working on that to be able to stream high density songs eventually or uh, high quality songs rather so they let you hear high quality pono music and it's original quality uh, and you can plug it in you have it has a speaker port it has a stereo output to plug into your sound system And uh, all the audio files out there might find inter may find that interesting because it's a you know it's like a, a, a audio files dream to be able to carry your music around that instead of, you know because most most high density music what they're considering some of the best music right now are the 180 gram LPs that they've been re-releasing 
But instead of carrying a record player with you, you can carry this thing. So, well, you know, I'm not trying to compare records to digital, but apparently this is getting pretty close to that kind of quality. So their Kickstarter campaign is being watched carefully by many key people in the music industry. That's good. And uh, they partnered with the engineering team at AYRE, A -Y -R -E, I'm not sure that's pronounced, www.ayre.com, to include some of their world-class audio technology in their Pono player. Yeah. And there's some, some technical readouts on their page you can read there. Well, the digital filter uses in Pono player as minimal phase and no unnatural pre-ringing or circuitry zero feedback. The digital DAC, the digital analog converter chip, is used widely recognized in the audio and engineering community as one of the best sounding DAC chips available today. And it says that the Pono Music is not a new audio file or format, file format or standard. It is an end-to-end -end e ecosystem for music lovers to get access to, to and enjoy their favorite music at the highest resolution possible for that song or album. And right now they're selling full albums from around $14.99, $24.99, which is about... 20, 24 bucks is about the range for a good 1080, 1080, uh, 180-gram record LP. But if you get that kind of sound quality in a digital format, hey, I'm all for it. Uh, and it records uses a FLAC files, F-L-A-C. Anywhere from CD lossless quality to ultra-high resolution recordings. They're working, they're supported by all major labels and they're growing catalogs of high quality digital music. They're also working with independent labels across all genres to have a really diverse music store. Uh, oh, I said, and, and they said that for the price, you get the best quality digital music available anywhere. Anywhere. You own these albums forever. They don't live only in the cloud, but also on your computer and backup disk. And you can play them anytime you wish on your Pono player or other compatible devices. So apparently if there are other, other devices that use the FLAC format that have that kind of quality output, you can play it on there. Eventually they'll, they'll offer individual songs, there's not to that point yet. And of course you get a, an app for your PC or Mac. It'll give you access to the Pono Music Store. And... Uh, the Pono player uses a mini USB cable to connect to your computer's USB port. I said it has two output jacks. One's a mini stereo headphone plug. And the other's a stereo mini plug analog output specifically designed for listening on your home audio system. And right now it comes in yellow and black. It comes with a charger, an adapter, a wall adapter, a micro USB cable, uh, 64 gigabytes of internal memory and a removable 64 gigabyte micro SD card is included. That's nice. And the desktop software is free for Mac or PC. And it's basically 5 inches long, 2 inches wide, and 1 inch deep. That's what I'm reading here. Looks like pretty easy to use controls. Got a one year warranty and should retail for about $399. But if you uh, pledge on uh, Kickstarter, you can get it for $300 when it comes out. And I can hold anywhere from your CD lossless quality recordings can hold about 5,000 tracks. High resolution recordings can hold about 3,200 tracks. Uh, higher resolution recordings about 1,600 tracks. And ultra high resolution recordings about 800 tracks. That's pretty, that's a lot of tracks. Uh, and it's all, it can also play almost any kind of other kind of music. Tracks including FLAC, ALAC, A L A C, MP3, Wave, AIFF, and AAC unprotected. Anyway, apparently it'll sound really great coming through because of the higher end processing uh, components in it. And streaming music says streaming music typically requires higher, highly compressed music files, and at this time, high resolution digital music is not well suited for streaming. It can't yet, based on a lot of technical variables in the net network playback chain rely reliably deliver the sound quality you deserve from your favorite artist's finest recordings. It's not yet, but hopefully someday. It says, Neil Young is, the, is our founder and, and the vision, force, energy, and voice of Pono music. Pono means righteous in Hawaiian. So basically, you'll be able to feel the master in all its glory and in its native resolution. So, so that sounds like, like I said, an audio file dream come true. 
anybody else who likes high-quality music. And eventually, they'll be, I'm sure there'll be competitors on the market and the prices will come down. But something good to check out for is a good, good Kickstarter business. A good, you know, good Kickstarter to check out. And uh, that's the four businesses I have this week. Until next week, you know, please don't forget to subscribe and share my, my video page here, my channel. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. Remember, I welcome all constructive criticism, but I don't acknowledge trolls. Thank you.